we're starting to make a real game. Now that we understand variables, but also if statements, we're ready to start making actual gameplay. But there's one last very important thing that will help us make that a bit easier. I've made a bit of a level here. We're not gonna get into the tile map system uh, in Unity within this tutorial series. I'll make a separate video on that at some point in the future. But we pretty much have the same setup that we had before. We have the key over here, we've got the door over here, but now we just gotta go get it through a bit more of a maze. I'm also going to be adding a new diamond shape in here, and we're going to put that in as a enemy. So let's make that blue, or maybe green. Let's make it green. And today we're going to be talking about these two drop-down menus up here, that being the tags and the layers, and when to use which one. You can give every single object in your game a certain tag. As you can see, there is a number of default tags that Unity comes with, but you can add your own tags. And in this list here, we can add a tag for enemy. And in our player character, we can put in a tag for player. And we could even put in a tag for the key on the key. And tags can be used in code to identify a certain type of object without having to go look through all the components on an object to see if it has a certain type of script, right? Because right now, this enemy isn't going to be doing anything. So it doesn't need a script on it. We do need to set it to being an enemy tag. But now, even without putting a script on it, we can actually run code to check whether or not we're colliding with an enemy. Because we're going to give this thing a box collider... 2D and we're going to set that to being a trigger. We have two different things that do triggering events, right? We can collide with the capsule, which will set our has key value to being true and then delete the key itself. But we don't want that to happen when we collide with the enemy. So in our on trigger 2D, we're actually going to put in an if statement. And that's why I wanted to talk about if statements before getting into this because we're going to be checking if our collision, which is the thing that we're colliding with, dot tag equals, and then we can put in a string and we'll check whether or not it's a key. If it's a key, we just do the code that we already made and then we return, meaning that we are going to not run any other code in this event. But if it's not a key, then we're going to put a else if, we'll check whether or not it's a enemy. And if it's an enemy, we'll run this bit of code which resets the scene, which we talked about before. Now, if you've seen the last video, you might be thinking, hey, didn't you say that this is a sloppy way of doing things? And yes, it is. I just wanted to show you this before. Now we're going to replace this with a switch statement instead. So we're going to switch on our collision.tag and we'll put in case key and at the end we'll break. And then we'll put in a case for enemy which will reload the scene and then we'll break it's a much better way of doing things than using a load of if statements so now we can see if we run into that it resets the game but if we go up here and we go to collect the key we just collect a key and that's because of the different tags that those objects have but now what's the difference between those tags and the layers we have that's quite simple. Tags are just for identifying the type of objects that we're talking about. Layers are specifically for collision related things. So we can put these walls on a layer that we can just add here. Uh, let's use layer six, uh, let's call it wall. And now we can add the walls to being on the wall layer. These are all separate objects. Again, I'm using the tile map here to easily quickly make levels. Different video for a different day. Let's make this door that we have here. Uh, a different layer as well. So we can on layer seven call that one door. And let's make one more thing uh, that will be a pitfall, a, a trap of sorts. So we can go into our sprites and make a new square. Let's make this one black to represent being a bottomless pit. Give it a box collider 2D so that it has collision. And then make a new layer for it and we'll call that trap. Set its layer to that newly made trap layer and let's put that over here in the corner for testing purposes and with all that you could in theory now check whether or not the layer for the collision 
is trap or not when you collide with something and do something based on that but how does that differ from using tags well and that's the interesting bit this is not what you should be using layers for. Layers are specifically designed to be used for collision-based stuff. So if you come up here into Edit Project Settings, in the Physics 2D tab, we can now see that the default layer interacts with all of these layers. So if we disable the trap layer in our default row, and our player is set to being default, there won't be any collision between these layers, but everything else still does have collision. Now, for a trap, obviously, uh, that doesn't work very well, <laughs> but if you have certain elements that need to be able to interact with something that's not the player, or only the player and not other stuff, you can make layers ignore each other in this way. If you're doing ray casting, for instance, which is a slightly more advanced step, but you can mask out which layer you want a raycast to actually look for. I'm not going to go too deep into the functionality of layers and collisions and physics and stuff like that, but I wanted to include layers in this video real quick to show you how they differ from tags. For the time being, most of the functionality that you're going to want to be using at a basic level, you're going to want to use tags, checking, is the tag for this object an enemy? Is it a key? Is it a trap door? Because that is realistically what you would do here, is we would go back to the project settings and re-enable this real quick. And instead of using a layer here, we can just set this back to the default layer. We would actually just put in a tag for being a trap and just set this as the trap. Because there's nothing different between the way we have to check for the collision. So there's no reason to use a different collision layer. So if you just set this to being trigger, we can then just include this as a new case, which does the same thing as the enemy case. And now you can see that it works the same way again as it should. So that is how tags work on game objects and a little introduction to how layers work as well. Again, I'm not gonna go into them too deep right now because they can be confusing and bothersome and for the most part, unless you're doing things using physics, anything that you want to do with layers, you're probably better off using tags. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.